Hi everyone. I have some good news. This is the last one. Okay, so we'll be passing. So my name is Ioannis Nikas. I came from the University of Patras and the Department of Tourism Management. And today we present you my work entitled Special Depan Newton Step for Solving Nonlinear Equations. I try to be uh, as short as possible. So, uh, okay, okay. Okay. Well, this is a, a short sketch of, uh, of my work. Firstly, we state the, the, the problem. I will tell you about interval analysis and interval methods, a general framework of uh, interval algorithms. I will describe you the interval Newton method. We'll discuss some pathological cases, which is the motivation of this work. And then we show you uh, our proposal, my proposal and the numerical results, some numerical results. So in this work, we consider the problem of solving a differentiable nonlinear equation over closed search interval. Specifically, we wish to solve this equation using the well-known interval Newton method in cases where a zero with multiplicity exists. So, what is interval analysis? Interval analysis is an extension of real analysis where the, uh, where the entities are not numbers, real numbers, but closed intervals of numbers. And the intervals is denoted uh, by a number bracketed, uh, a bracketed number, sorry. And uh, the end points, and then points of this interval by underlining and overlining this, this letter. The set of all intervals is denoted by the IR, uh, namely real intervals. So for this reason, uh, we define, uh, the interval arithmetic is defined. As you can see, this is the, the implementation of this arithmetic. These are four rules. Actually, is the all possible combination of the endpoints. The only limitation is in the case of interval division, where it, uh, there is a requirement that the zero do, must not belong to the interval B, the denominator. However, to pass this uh, the limitation, an extended interval arithmetic was defined to, to have the case where the denominator contains zero. And this extend, extended interval allows the minus and the plus infinite to be the endpoints of an interval. That is, we have, no, have now the IR star set, which is the real intervals plus the, same, you know, the semi-infinite intervals and the real line. Uh, we have also defined some uh, useful functions and operators. I only present you these functions and operators that are useful for this presentation, that's the width of an interval is uh, a simple idea or the midpoint and the intersection of two intervals. The only thing I have to mention about this that if, uh, if two intervals, namely A and B, have no points in common, then uh, the result is an empty interval. So, and here is the basic property of interval analysis, which states that uh, an interval computation of F over an interval contains the actual range of a function. This name fundamental theorem of interval analysis. Uh, the pay we have to the the cost we have to pay for this uh, theorem is that the, the enclosure is overestimated. But unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, sorry, the range estimation is dependent on the width of the interval. So the thinner the interval, the smaller the, the overestimation. What that means? Here are some examples. We have, uh, I have to uh, design four examples to illustrate you the, the nature of interval arithmetic, interval analysis. Firstly, we have a, a simple example, the x square minus two over the interval minus three, three, where an interval uh, calculation have been done, resulting in the interval minus two, seven, which means that the, the estimated range contains zero. In this case, the estimation, the estimated range is the exact, exact range. The function has uh, two zeros, 
But due to the nature of interval analysis, the only thing we can say is that possibly there may be some zeros next. This is more clear in the second example where we have an overestimation of the range. Again, we have zeros, and the only thing we can say is that possibly there might be zeros in X. And we have a worst case. This is on the left. Function has not zero at all, but the overestimated rate of F tells us that possibly there may be zeros in X. However, in the fourth example, which is the essence of, it, uh, of fundamental theorem of interval analysis, if we manage to enclose the range and this range does not have the zero inside, then we can say with certainty that the function has no zero at all in this interval. Okay. So, how can we employ these results to develop an algorithm solving equations? This, uh, this method, these algorithms have some serious properties. First of all, an exhaustive search is performed in the given search interval. That is, we can result in enclosures which contain all zeros of f. If the zero does not belong to the uh, interval estimation of f, then f has no zeros at all. It's, it's certain. In the opposite case, we can say that possibly there may be zeros in x, but we have to reduce the search interval, to reduce the overestimation, and to conclude a decision, to conclude to a decision. In addition, uh, an interval algorithm accepts an interval to be a zero enclosure if it's width it's very small. Okay. And, and finally, the, uh, an interval algorithm converts eventually to enclosures of all zeros of an equation. And this is uh, an, a realization of interval algorithms. You can see there is five stages. Uh, the one is that, first of all, I have to examine if there are exist zeros. But because if zero does not belong to the range of f, then there is no need to keep searching the, the search interval. If, there are, if I cannot uh, decide if I cannot make a decision in this line, then I have to check if this interval is small enough. Otherwise, I have to, to think or to propose a reduction, a reduction sim, sorry. And I have, if I, I manage to reduce the search interval, then I have to try the method again. If it's not possible, then I have to force the reduction by adapting a bisection sim. Okay, so what is the simplest, the simplest method? Is the interval by section. We assume that we have no such a mechanism, a reduction mechanism. So what's the mechanism, the reduction mechanism? Just to give bisect the search interval. Okay, so you can see the animation on the left. The initial search interval is bisected again and again until either the termination criterion is met or the interval is discarded. Resulted finally to the red small intervals containing the zero of f. Okay, now, if I have a reduction sim like Newton or better like an interval Newton, you can see in this uh, red frame, this is actually the interval Newton method. Then I have a reduction mechanism. Okay. But I keep this state in case that interval Newton cannot reduce the search interval. Again, this is the animation. It's similar to, it's similar, I'm sorry, to classic Newton Raphson method. But as you can see, we use two slopes, which enclose the derivative. Okay. So, the red formulas describe the interval Newton operator. This is where the classic and the interval method different, are different. 
it. And on the right side, we have some serious properties. What these properties tell us? That if the zero belongs to an interval, then this zero will belong to the interval uh, derived by the Newton operator. The second property tells us that if the intersection of Newton operator and the interval is the empty interval, then there exists no zero of f in x with certainty. And again, if this uh, interval derived by the interval Newton method is belongs is strictly belongs to the interval x, then there exists a unique zero of f. Well, let's now consider a case where the, the Newton operator cannot result a specific interval. Why is this happened? Is this happening because the zero belongs to the denominator, the denominator, no, the denominator, sorry, at the same time. The actual uh, interval Newton operator results the real line, and the intersection results the same interval. We have no reduction at all. This case is called pathological, and we have to apply a bisection sim to reduce the search interval. This is an exam, uh, example. Here is an equation and a function, x squared, a simplet uh, function, with a zero of simplicity two, of x, multiplicity two, sorry. The search interval is not reduced if we apply interval Newton. So we adapt the bisection sim. If we, if we bisect the search interval, as you can see, this zero, the unique zero of f, belongs to both intervals, and x1 and x2. So the algorithm will eventually result two enclosures enclosing a single zero. And this can be shown in the application of the interval Newton over the left interval, the right interval, and the whole interval, where the cost is almost twice the initial cost. The same for this example, where, we, where here we have a, a, a single zero again with multiplicity three of three. And again, we have similar behavior. Okay. What we propose? We propose to pertur uh, a perturbation of F to construct a new function, to apply Newton interval Newton on this function, and we want to employ these founded zeros and closures to propose a new partition of f. Let me be more clear. Here is the, the example one. And what we propose, we, we propose a perturbation of f. We shift downwards this, uh, the, the equation f, the function f. The, the new function contains two zeros, which are, uh, are not real zeros of f. But if we apply Newton in this one, interval Newton, then we'll derive the red intervals, which enclosures of these fake zeros, and, and there is an, a remaining blue interval, which containing the actual zero of f. So we don't know from the start that this is the interval. So what we are doing, we apply interval Newton again in the next step on f on, the, on these three intervals. Hopefully, hoping that these two red intervals will discard it and stay with a very sharp interval. Similarly, we have the same pro uh, approach in here. Okay. And this is the proposed algorithm. Essentially, we have replaced the initial bisection C with this, uh, with this uh, function, which uh, uh, actually applies once when the problem occurs, interval Newton in the new function and then the resulted intervals are sent again to the initial algorithm to be processed again. 
Now, some remarks. The amount of perturbation P is chosen heuristically. Okay. But P satisfies the condition P. In other words, P must be greater than epsilon. Because the algorithm will not be able to see the difference if it's not less than epsilon. Okay. We consider some uh, test functions with multiples of zeros, except from the first one, to show that if no, uh, no multiple zero exists, then the behavior is the same. Okay. And we apply the Newton with tolerance 10 to minus 12. We will test our technique to, with various uh, P. We used MATLAB and ITLAB till toolbox to implement our approach and with, uh, compared with the classical interval Newton. And this is the, the numerical result. As you can see, the yellow numbers shows uh, an improvement. And this improvement is, is getting bigger as the perturbation tends to epsilon. So, some sort of conclusions. Uh, the proposed technique enhances the efficiency of the interval Newton method, okay, when there is a pathological case. The amount of perturbation seems to affect the effectiveness of the proposed technique. And, of course, this, uh, the optimality of this perturbation should be investigated in some future work. I think I've done. Thank you for your attention.